how crossbars get detached from the trailer, from the container. You can look here, you can see one about right here. When you, when you go from outside to find out without having to bend it down, you put your finger, you stop here. Here's a stop. You come here, there is no stop, which means you are losing one here. There is one here. There is one here. So what happened to this one? When you go under to look, you discover that the crossbar is right here. It moved. It's supposed to be here. It moved. What happened? It was the junction was broke. If you look here carefully, you discover it is a cast iron. So it broke right here. This is the place where it broke. It's very cheap stuff. It broke right here. And it moved to the side. And when you keep driving, when this trail go on the train, the vibration will make this, this thing bend and fall from the container. From the other side, I can see it. It is, it is still bolted or riveted to the other side, but it broke from here. So let us hammer it and see what happened. There is not even a room to hammer it. Yeah? You cannot even hammer it with my hand. You have to have a, a lever, a lever and the bullet hard, because as you see, the trailer is heavy, so it is pushing it down. If you look at this design, it is wide this way. This is another company design. It is different, if you look at here, it is different from here. Different designer. Here the rivets are separated more here the rivets are close to each other. But even here, there is a missing rivet. This is another manufacturer. You go under, you discover there is one missing right, right here. This is missing. When you go under, there is a missing crossbar here. Same chip. Look at here, you can see it is broken. They use cheap cast iron when the train stops or breaks down or a forklift vibrates inside, uh, drives inside the trailer. The vibration itself will make the cast iron rupture, breaks, because it's very fragile, brittle. That, that is how you use the, the crossbars. The crossbars are the very vital part of the container because you have to have three beams, three directions. You will have to have the transverse direction, that direction, uh, transverse to the uh, container, and you have to have the longitudinal beams, and you have to have the vertical thickness of the crossbars. So you have a thickness, that way, vertical, and you have a transverse that way, and you have a longitudinal. That's how you stabilize this nasty, ugly box on the highway. Of course, your only emphasis is to put the load on the bottom of the container. That is why it stays stable. That's like trying to design an aeroplane trying to make it as light as possible, as strong as possible, using a certain concept in engineering, like the honeycomb design. Here is, you cannot use the honeycomb here because you have extremely heavy weight and, and in extreme direction, only at the bottom. Sometimes, of course, you put them on the top of each other in the train, on the rail. But when you do that, you use this kind of beam, the vertical beams, very strong beams to load them. They load only on these points. You cannot load them on, on other parts of the of the frame because you don't have the same kind of strength to support the load. If you try to replace the crossbars, if you have more than one, two, or three, or four, you're making a very serious mistake because you don't know if there is any 
internal damage to the longitudinal beam that you have to do X-ray on to see if you have a hidden fracture inside the metal. Also, also, if the crossbars are missing, you don't know if the frame itself have internal fractures at the joints, at the main joints of the frame. So when the frame, when the container reaches the maximum or the or become old, with this stupid kind of cast iron, we can replace these joints by making make them more durable steel instead of having cast iron that uh, very brittle.